Rick Kropp, and I'm here with The Breeze, Bay Area Houston Magazine, and Go Baja. And this morning I have two distinguished guests. We have Mike Milo with Carnes Funeral Home, and we have also Teresa Graham, Director of the North Galveston County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, everyone. Thanks Thank for you. having us. How are you all today? Great. Love this weather. What do you think about the weather, Mike? I storm chase with uh, Jay Carnes from Carnes the Funeral Home, and um, and so anytime inclement weather comes, uh, whether it be potential freeze or snow, we, we get a little excited. So you've actually uh, been in a storm or followed a storm, correct? Well, Hurricane Ike was pretty unique. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> and actually, that say. year we did four storms the same year. So, wow, that's incredible. Well, now, Teresa, we've talked about the, uh, we kind of put the cart before the horse. We talked about the climate here that we're enjoying and that has been in the past. Let's talk about the economic climate. Being the director of the North Galveston County Chamber, what's happening in the county? We are very impressed with the economic development in this area. Our area has not seen the losses that some of the North Houston Chambers have seen in their areas especially the corridors of 646 and FM 517. We are in a growth mode right now. Why do you feel those particular areas in the county are doing much better than Galveston County as a whole? I just think that this is an ideal place for people to move to. They like the climate, they like the school systems, and I am very proud that we represent both the CCISD and the DISD school districts. So I noticed that another thing you have going for you is the growth, and you talk about the school districts, which are really good, um, but the growth also residentially. Homes are continuing to be being built in the county, uh, especially in uh, Marabella. That's part of your area, right? right. Uh, off 146, we're seeing some growth down there in San Leon. Mm -hmm. People are building homes and coming back from the storms and uh, other areas of the county as well. I think you're seeing a tremendous expansion up here in Dickinson mm -hmm. in that area. And uh, I think the growth really for the entire Harris County is going to be from uh, where we are in Clear Lake down to Galveston County where it all comes together. Would you say that's true? I would say that's true. And I think that some people may be moving from the north, north like north of Dallas, north states in the United States, primarily because of the climate and because we do have jobs available. Right. Well, I think uh, we're off to start a great new year. Well, Mike, you know, being a leader in this community and being actively involved, I know you are with the Chamber, how do you feel about the economic climate? What, what do you see as a business leader? What I see as, a, as, a, as the chairman of the board in the Chamber is a newfound enthusiasm in small businesses in this community. I, I think that they turn to chambers to help their small businesses grow and we created a uh, an enthusiasm last year uh, in our chamber and we started with the Extreme Makeover Home Edition and carried that through to extreme um, luncheon programs. Uh, we had Anise Parker come in and speak last year. Uh, we had the Houston Astros come in and speak. So we, we upped the ante and the expectations of what the business community was expecting uh, of a chamber. And I think we've increased their enthusiasm, and that's what I'm seeing nowadays is, is, a, is a newfound excitement. Well, Therese, I think the two of you, the dyna dynamic duo we have here with the North Galveston <laughs> Chamber, um, let's make it simplistic. What does a chamber offer a member? Well, I think we have lots to offer. And one of the most important things that we have to offer as a, a chamber is an opportunity for businesses to network with other businesses. You know, whether it is our monthly chamber lunches, it's our business brown bag lunches, it's our business breakfast, it's our after hours mi mixers. All of those uh, are for the businesses to meet other businesses and share their ideas and thoughts. I know if I was uh, getting ready to start a business, which you know I did 25 years ago, uh, the first thing I'd do would be to meet the president of the chamber mm -hmm. and also the chairman of the board because they could give me all the information and groundwork that is already part participating in what's happening in the area and who to go to for resources. And it saves a lot of time, money, and effort. So not only to have to join the membership but become actively involved makes a big difference, right? Absolutely. In fact, um, 
one of the steps and strides that we're taking in this chamber is to get our communities. You know, we're a unique chamber because we service several communities, Clear Lake Shores, uh, Dickinson, League City, Kima, and we're now embracing San Leon and Baycliffe and, and all of that area that, that sort of lost their chamber after Hurricane Ike. But one of the things that we're doing is getting with the leaders of those um, those communities, the mayors, the city administrators, to be an advocate for their economic development uh, teams. And we don't want to step on their economic development, but what we are uh, willing to do is as they enhance a business to come in, we are going to step in and serve as their advocate, serve as their reference, if you will, that this is a great place to come and do business. Another way I believe that we help the small businesses in the area is that we have different committees that they can send representatives and those representatives learn leadership skills through working on the committees. Right. Well for Teresa, your background, you've worked for profit organizations, corporations in the past, but also you've been with other chambers, mm -hmm. economic development groups, and even served in many nonprofit. Uh, you're a real compliment to the community. And Michael, serving on the chairman of the board, I know this is quite a big job and task. And one of the things I do, I want to give you a kind of a 10-second brag since you're here on the show. Tell us about Carnes uh, Funeral Home. Yeah, I'm the communications director for Carnes Funeral Home. And uh, we specialize in, in three areas, funerals, cremations, and medical body donations, which we might want to do a whole program on. Um, the, the cremation rate is the lowest in the, in the entire Houston area at $675. And then our medical body donation program, if people want to donate their body to science, they can get a no-cost service. And I think that is another thing that, that, that uh, is helping today's economy when you talk about the business community is that you have businesses out there finding ways to offer no-cost services. And that's one of the things that Carnes has pioneered over the last few years. Carnes does a relatively unique thing. Every April is Organ and Tissue Donor Month, and so everybody who donated their body to science within the last 12 months gets invited to a mass memorial service that we host. So if they didn't have a memorial service for their family member, they can come in April to our memorial service, and it's an amazing event. It may even be one that you want to come to and, 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 and put a camera on and do some interviews with some of these families because it is just an incredible event and, and to listen to them talk about why their loved one donated to science. There's a variety of stories. They get to get up and say a few words. It's just a unique little event that, uh, that we do on the last Saturday of April. Well, that is outstanding information and great. We will come back and visit that topic again. It is a pleasure having you here today, Michael, and taking the time to visit with us, Carnes. Funeral home here located in uh, Texas City, right? Texas City, and then we have another location in South Houston. Excellent, great. And Teresa, always a pleasure to see you keep okay. the chamber in, right. in good you. health economically and uh, financially you. and uh, happily, so in yeah. good spirits. Well, again, thanks for coming. You yeah. got one more comment? Well, I was just going to say we'd like to invite you to our banquet, which is going to be uh, the 63rd annual banquet coming up uh, in uh, February, February 4th, correct? Right. And it's at South Shore Harbor. And it's a casino night theme. You're oh, great! Betting your like betting it. on your success, betting your success on getting involved. I think. And it's uh, open to the public, right? It is. It to, and so, what's the date come, again? The date is Friday, February fourth. Okay. And um, it's it is open to South the public. South Shore Harbor. South Shore Harbor Resort, the beautiful South Shore. What Harbor, time? Six thirty, and it's uh, sixty dollars for an individual ticket, or fifty dollars for each for a couple, and then we have lower prices for individuals over 55. And what do they get for that, for the $60? They get a beautiful seated dinner. Oh, okay. Okay, and then dinner afterwards, included. there's going to be a, a casino night, and we've got some fabulous prizes that they can win for that. I'd also like to mention, if you don't mind, that we do have two or three fabulous things coming up this uh, year that we've already got in mind, and one is our Red, White, and Bayou Crawfish music fest that is held in downtown Dickinson Excellent. that involves the whole community and Very it's good. just a wonderful outdoor activity for the whole family. Is it a first and, year event? Uh, Technically. We're, we're going to call um, it a first year event. Okay. We, 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 we planned it last year and I called it the greatest event that didn't happen. Okay. There was a weather 
uh, uh, anomaly that came yeah. through, tornadoes, threatened. Oh, good, storm and, uh, Right, yeah. right, and I'm standing there in a beer booth. Right. Um, you know, and, and here comes this tornado-looking thing in the, in the sky. You know, but uh, it was the greatest event that didn't happen. It was absolutely amazing, even for those who showed up with the weather e event. Right. Um, so this will be the first year we're going to knock on wood for some positive right. uh, weather, and, and we've got some great bands from Excellent. across the state. And that's the third Saturday in May. And what's the other event, the other team? Uh, well, we have a car show. We're teaming up with the Space City Cruisers right. to produce a quality car show. And that date will be announced very soon. And we okay. also have a golf tournament. Well, great. So. And then the uh, a really hot event that, that, that the community just loves, our politically incorrect event. Uh, it's, in, it's in August. Right, I participated in that last year. It was uh -huh. a lot of fun. Yeah, it services our scholarship fund. And the, the community leaders and the county leaders come on board to uh, serve as waiters and waitresses. It's a great event. Wonderful. I think one of the things that makes our chamber so unique is that we have a, such a variety of members. We have members such as BP North America, Mainland uh, Medical Sorry. Center, we have UTMB, we have from the small mom and pop and to the very large uh, corporations that support our chamber. Great. And we have a, a variety of those individuals representative on our board of directors. And Mike was instrumental in that. And I think that is only going to help make this chamber grow and thus help our economic development in our area. Fantastic. Well, 300 members strong, right? Right. That's quite a feat. Well, y'all, uh, always remember, support your chamber if you are starting a business, whether it's you discuss or participate in any of the local chambers of commerce. They can really help you quite a bit, whether it's North Galveston, Clear Lake, Leak City, or Galveston County. So, um Again, thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you taking the thank time you, on your business schedule. Appreciate it. You're watching The Breeze. Okay, as we continue The Breeze, today we're very fortunate because we've got some culinary uh, experts here. I have Holly Lilly with Dickinson Barbecue and Steakhouse, and also the right or left hand uh, man or woman, how you want to put it, Anna Clark, who kind of puts the pace to the, to the food. And uh, good morning, ladies. Morning. How are you all today? Good. Fine, thank you. Good, hard working. How was your weekend? Good business? It was. Extremely. Yeah. Excellent, I'm glad to hear it. Everything's great in Dickinson. It's really picking up there, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. is. Dickinson's booming these days. Well, Holly, um, I do want to say this. Uh, Holly doesn't know this, but she was selected their restaurant. Congratulations to both of you and also to Keith, uh, Holly's husband. They were voted Best of the Bay, two awards in two categories, which are pretty tough competition. Has voted Best Barbecue and uh, Family restaurant. So, what do you think about that? That's awesome. You you've uh, been in business how long? We've owned the restaurant about fourteen months. Great, just over a year. Not yes. even two years yeah. to win those two awards. Yeah. I know that uh, you must be doing something right. So, tell me a little bit about the menu, and Anna, tell me what do you guys serve there? What is the typical uh, the cuisine that you would offer? Fabulous barbecue, chicken, turkey. Everything is fresh daily. The steaks are fabulous. They're cut on site daily. We have 21 different desserts, and when I first started, we had three. And now we have gone to 21, and business 21, 21. desserts? Oh my goodness. Yep. From scratch, all of it is from scratch. And non-fat, right? I've taken all the calories out of all of them. <laughs> well, you're looking good. Well, Anna, I know you're producing some award-winning desserts there to to have won those awards. Tell me a little bit, how did you get involved in the food business? Having six daughters and one husband that loves to eat, and I started collecting recipes and recipe cookbooks, various places, various states that we went, and that's the way I got started. And then after my husband passed away, then I got a job at a restaurant doing the baking there. We're doing a great job because uh, I see the lines every day at lunchtime and also sometimes on the weekends. Uh, you also do pickup, right? You've got a takeout drive through right? Mm -hmm. drive through yes. Well, tell me a little bit more about the restaurants, the dynamics. How does, that, how does it work? Is it a family restaurant? It's family. It's cafeteria style. So what type of barbecue do you guys have? We have um, choice Angus beef, brisket, um, pork loin, smoked ham. Everything is fresh. Everything is fresh. I know the turkey too is one of the one of the good items. 
But I noticed another thing too that Keith, your husband, was telling me everything on the vegetables and everything is made fresh every day. Is that correct? Yes. Hand chopped, hand made by Anna and the rest of the staff right back yes. there in the kitchen. Yes. And it's a big difference. One of the favorites I know is the jalapeno bread. That's baked there too as well, right? Yes. So everything is done on premise. Um, your background was in restaurants? Legal. Legal. <laughs> now, isn't that a great... What's it like to work with your husband? I should say, because his background is in restaurants. This is. It's, we've done well. We've done well. We have different strengths. Great. So, yeah. And you have two kids, right? Two boys. two boys. Are they moving into that restaurant mode? or? Um, our oldest one's in college, so he's away. And our youngest one's a senior, and he works with us four or five nights a week. And when you do have time to go off and enjoy yourself, what do you guys like to do, you and Keith? Uh, motorcycle ride, boating. Staying pretty active. Yeah. Yeah, I know you guys are big bikers. You like to go out on wine. Yeah. Wine, um, the wine and wildflower wine tours. tours. Well, tell me, do you have wine and beer at the uh, restaurant? We do. We um, feature Texas wines that we picked up on our motorcycle tours. Yeah, great. Hey, perfect. And uh, we also and we have California wines. Um, of course, we have all the Texas beers. And cold beer and barbecue goes <laughs> yeah. together. China. You know, but you're not labeled just as a steakhouse and barbecue. That's what your name says. But there's what we would call country uh, cooking, right? You offer like chicken fried steak and chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken, and all of that is hand battered, and all of the breading is mixed up in the back. It's not boxed or any of that. It's all mixed up from scratch in the kitchen. And how do you like working with this group? Fantastic. Great Excellent. people, huh? A lot of fun, and yes. you're real proud of your awards, huh? We'll Very much so, yes. Well, we hope you come out to the Best of Bay Awards on uh, Thursday night. One of you, or I know you're busy in the kitchen back there, to receive your coveted award and uh, a job well done. It's a pleasure to have you ladies on, on the show today. I understand we're going to go back in the kitchen and try some of that award-winning barbecue. You and bet. Maybe one of those pecan pie. Or, oh, Italian creep game, that's one of my favorites of our people, and... Uh, you know, it's, gosh, probably the best in the Bay, so let's go back and try some. Great. Okay, well, here with this award-winning food, Anna and Holly, uh, this looks just delicious. And Rob, what do you think? I think this looks incredible. It's delicious. Oh, man, doesn't it smell great, too? And look what else we got. Shiner Bach. Shiner Bach, our favorite. Made here in uh, Texas. goes great with barbecue, but just about anything, right? Chicken fried steak. And you guys got great chicken, right? Um, Yes, we have Texas farm-raised fresh chicken, never frozen. Never frozen. Never frozen. And never caged. It's uh, cage-free, right? Yes. And um, Wow, and the wood. I guess it's very different. Like a hickory. Is that hickory or is it, that... We use 100% pecan smoke wood. Wow. So that you can get a good smell up very well. Mm -hmm. well. Well, Chef, tell us a little bit what we have here. Let's start with the desserts. First, we have an Italian cream cake with roasted pecans here. And this is our well-known pecan pie. My goodness, look at the size of that pecan pie. And I can tell that's a homemade crust, isn't it? Yes, it is. Not like me using something from Kroger frozen. No. no <laughs> and we have this, uh, what's that? German looks like a potato salad? Red skin potato salad. Made fresh, right? Yes, daily. Well, Chef, tell us what we have here. We have wonderful brisket. We have the melt-in-your-mouth ribs. Czech sausage, jalapeno cornbread, mm. and then fancied up with a little cilantro, and for those that are brave, a jalapeno pepper and yeah, pickles and onions. Yeah, baby. Well, tell me a little bit, too, about these aren't just regular uh, smoked ribs. They're St. Louis. Saw cut ribs. Fantastic. And do you all make your own barbecue sauce? From scratch. Yes, sir. Man, this is a scratch and eat restaurant. Yes, it is. Well, uh, everyone, um, i got to tell you, this is the award-winning cuisine. Uh, Rob, why don't you grab a rib here and uh, and let me grab here a brisket. Okay, Let's do the taste Ooh, test. And good. ladies, uh, I got to dip it. Grab some here. Get some of that on you. Okay. Good. Well, how is it, my friend? Let's go ahead and eat some of this right here. Mm, that is delicious. Tender. Mmm. Mm. Get some more of this award-winning barbecue. Where do I get it? Where? We're at 2111 FM 517 East Dickinson, Texas. Take 45 south, exit 517, go left, and then go about a mile and a half, and we're down on the left. Make sure you go to Dickinson and try out Dickinson's Barbecue and Steakhouse, and more.